up guys, welcome to Darby Hour. Today's tips, five ways to sit in the sand. Today we are in Línea de la Concepción and we came here for one thing and one thing only. No, 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 not that. That, right there. So guys, what is the Rock of Gibraltar? It's a monolith, a big rock. But it's in Spain. So we're, so it's... <laughs> Technically it belongs to Spain, but it's not yet Spanish. But then why do we need our passports? Because it is British. It has been it's for a, 300 years. It's a British overseas territory that's physically, like, basically Spain. So it's a rock. It's a rock? A rock! <laughs> it's a British rock in Spain. With the only wild monkey population in Europe. That's it. There you go. So because Gibraltar is actually an English territory, we parked in La Línea de la Concepción and we're gonna cross the border on foot just to save time. So if you come to Gibraltar from Spain, make sure you have your passport. Hola. Pip, pip, cheerio, God save the queen. Now we're in England. And here's the English phone booth to prove it. Although geographically Gibraltar looks like a part of Spain, that tiny piece of land that juts out into the Strait of Gibraltar is in fact part of the UK. For some context, basically Spain controlled Gibraltar up until 1704, when it was captured by Great Britain in the War of Spanish Succession. That was a war to determine who would sit on the Spanish throne after the reigning monarch, Charles II, died without an heir. Apparently he suffered from ill health and impotence as well as physical and mental disabilities, caused by generations of inbreeding within the royal Habsburg bloodline. That's a bit of a digression, but the War of Spanish Succession is a super interesting story, so I'll have to leave that for another video. So Charles II dies without an heir, and war breaks out in Europe. And during that war, Great Britain swoops in and captures Gibraltar. And it's been a British territory ever since. Yeah, it's the Queen, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm here. I just came here because I need to get Gibraltar back. Okay, no, okay. You don't agree, okay. <laughs> She's pretty busy. She doesn't, she doesn't agree. Now that we're in Gibraltar, we hopped on the bus to take us to the cable car station at the bottom of the monolith of the Rock of Gibraltar. And we're going to take the cable car up. Right, that's the bike. Yo estoy de Marueco y cuando termine de trabajo en Anando va Marueco. <laughs> So we ended up going with a minibus tour and not the cable car tour because it ended up being a little bit cheaper. And our first stop here is the Pillars of Hercules. So from here, we're in Gibraltar right now and you can see Spain right there. And then over here, you can see Morocco and Africa. According to myth, the Rock of Gibraltar is one of the Pillars of Hercules that the ancient Greek hero created when he had to cross from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. In the myth, the giant called Atlas was in his way, and Hercules had 12 labors to perform. He didn't have time to climb some mountain, so he smashed his way through with his godlike strength, creating the Strait of Gibraltar and leaving behind two pillars, the Rock of Gibraltar and the neighboring mountain Jebel Musa in Morocco. After admiring the view from one of the few places in the world where you can stand at one continent and look out at another, 
We went a little higher up the rock to see the true stars of the show, the Gibraltar monkeys. Barbary macaques are the only species of wild monkey in Europe, and in Europe, they can only be found in Gibraltar. No one really knows how they got there, if they're native to the rock, or if the Moors brought them there as pets. But there's about 300 of these cute little guys in Gibraltar, and they're not shy. They'll come right up to you looking for food, and they might even try to steal your hat. Hola, guapo. Sí, está grabando ahora. Ah, vale. Creo. Sí, no sé. I think he likes me. ¿Cómo se la foto? Creo que está grabando. Pero ve. No sé. Míralo. Sí, está grabando un video. Pues mira. So here we are. Here I am in the Rock of Gibraltar. This is my buddy. Oh, he's going to take a look. Hi, monkey. <laughs> no, you can't have that. Ay, sí. Que le la gorra. Mira la otra. <laughs> No, the other one. Todas tus amigas, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Legend says that once a joint effort from Spain and France intended to retake Gibraltar from the British was actually foiled by the monkeys because they were disturbed in the night by soldiers and their cries warned the British of an ambush attack. So a common saying about Gibraltar is, as long as the monkeys live on the rock, so too will the British have control. Just taking the load off after a long day, being a monkey, chasing food from tourists, stealing hats, having his photo taken. Our next and final stop is Princess Caroline's Battery. It's a lookout point that has some World War II cannons and a sweeping view of Gibraltar, but it's not the highest point on the rock. That would actually be O'Hara's Battery. But regardless, we found ways to make it interesting. You know, it's your, it's your moment to shine. <laughs> this could be bloopers. No, one more. Hey! What's up, Ryan? What's up? What are you doing there? You know, just checking out the views. Smooth! <laughs> so now that you've seen one way to visit Gibraltar, let me give you all the details so you can visit it yourself. Tourism is a driving force of Gibraltar's economy, but lodging can actually be pretty expensive there. If you're on a budget, I personally recommend staying the night in Spain, in a nearby city like Linea de la Concepcion or Algeciras, leaving your car in Linea de la Concepcion, and arriving to Gibraltar on foot. We stayed at a cheap, albeit sketchy, hostel in Algeciras and then drove to La Linea. When you get into Gibraltar, the number 10 bus will take you to the cable car station at the foot of the monolith. And from there, you can make your choice to walk up, ride the cable car, or take a minibus tour. The cable car rides and minibus tours vary from 17 pounds to around 35 pounds, depending on what you want to see, if you want a round trip, and if the nature reserve ticket is included. If you arrive in your own car, parking is two pounds. The nature reserve ticket is 13 pounds. The nature reserve ticket gives you access to every attraction on the rock, you'll just need to show the ticket to get in. Pause here for a full breakdown of the attractions and prices. Okay, so if you're fit enough and looking to save money, I would personally recommend walking up the monolith, buying the nature reserve ticket for 13 pounds, and then seeing the sights at your own pace. Our tour lasted an hour, and we were a bit rushed at each stop. But you could easily turn the Rock of Gibraltar into an all-day thing, 
hiking to different destinations that pique your interest. So if I were to do it again, that's what I would do. But everyone's level of fitness and budget is different, so do what you feel comfortable with. Hopefully now, you can make an informed decision. We just finished the minivan tour, and I, I thought it was worth it. 25, 25 euros. Ended up being a pretty good time. It's an hour trip, you get everything. You can stop in every one of the places, and you can take the pictures. The really nice place is the 24. The 25 one's really worth it. I don't know, the 35 one is really worth it. The 35 one, I think you get the Moorish Castle, and you get to enter the tunnels maybe, and the suspension, the suspension bridge. But for 25, you get, you get pretty much everything you're gonna wanna see. I mean, I got to hang out with monkeys, and we got to have a race at the top of the Rock and Gibraltar, so can't beat it. I had fun. So that afternoon, we left Gibraltar and headed to Tarifa, Spain, to camp in the southernmost point in continental Europe. I didn't record too much while we were there because I decided to put the camera down and just enjoy it, but it's definitely one of the places in Spain I need to go back to. It's most famous for windsurfing, and it's not hard to see why, but we enjoyed seafood, visited castles and sand dunes, and camped along the beach while we were there. It's an awesome place for nature lovers, and if you ever want to feel like you're in Africa while you're still in Europe, Tarifa is your destination. After Tarifa, we headed to the city of Cadiz for the final destination of our journey. So stay tuned for that video, and if you liked this one or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And as always, I'll do my best to keep giving travel. Bye, guys. Ha! <laughs>